God has said when we put our lives into his hands that he is working a process out, that every single person, every, every, every child he created is meant to be a masterpiece. And, uh, and so that's what Canvas is all about. It's about a fresh start. It's about a new beginning. It's about the fact that God is creating something new. And uh, I, I can't tell you, um, and I'll try not to get like emotional, because this has been a really, you know, this has been a long process. I know for us as a launch team, it's, it's taken up a good part of this last year. But, um, but for myself, and I think for, for, I could say for my family, it's, it's been a dream and it's been a seed that God's put in our hearts years ago. And honestly, it, it was, you know, as I've spoken to this group before, it was something at one point I thought, it's dead. It's, it's not going to happen. Which is why I am so excited because God is the God of resurrection. Uh, he does bring dead things to life again. And, and so as this thing has um, sprung forth and it, as it has taken life in that, it has reminded me of that fact. And it has also compelled me. And, uh, and I, I, I want to encourage every one of you that what we're called to in this community is, is to speak into the lives of those around us who have also been to places where maybe they've had dreams, maybe they've had desires, and things that, um, just because of the stuff of life, because things can sometimes just be really crappy, um, that they've found themselves in a place where they're like, this isn't going to ever happen. You know, I thought it was, but, you know, this and this and that has now taken place, and, and that dream is dead. My favorite thing as a pastor is to see resurrection in the lives of other people. You know, things that they thought were dead come to life again. You don't see that in like snapshots. You only see that when you hang with people over the long haul. You got to stay with them. You got to stay with them through the turns and the dips and all of that and realize that, yeah, life does happen. And we can't control a lot of the things that happen to us. And sometimes things will absolutely break our hearts and bring us to a place where we almost, I'll, I'll use, uh, you know, I'll use Heather's words, you know, who's been, you know, through so much in the last couple of months, you know, where you feel like you're ground down to almost nothing but dust. You've got to hang on and you've got to hang with people to see what God can breathe into that. He breathed life into dust. That's how we were created. And he can do that again. He can do it again. So, um, so next next Sunday we we officially launch. That's it. We we launch this baby. And um, and you know, like I said, this has been a destination and a goal that we have been working towards and traveling to for 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 months now. Um, but I want to be really clear with you about something that next week is not the end. Next week is the beginning. The end of this particular leg of that journey, this, this goal that we have been working towards, um, the goal reaches its completion, you know, to some degree in the way of our preparation next week, but really it doesn't. Because God has commissioned and he's called each and every one of us to a work that is more far-reaching than just launching this thing. It's about truly being a blessing and bringing hope to the community of Northwest Arkansas. And so the end is the beginning. And it's easy for people within churches or any organization for that matter to become complacent when they lose sight of some kind of clear goal. I think there's a lot of times, and in my experience in growing up in church and being in churches and that, there's a lot of times I, I think that, you know, churches can, can lose their identity. They can have an identity crisis. They don't know what they exist to do. And so we just come and we go through the motions, and at the end of it all, you're kind of left going, okay, I, I think this is important. I was told that this was important. I show up and I do my stuff, but what is it really for? Because if we're not going outside of this place 
and, and we aren't interacting with people in our lives, and we aren't sharing the story of what God is doing in our hearts, and we're not seeing lives transformed, then, then we're, just, we're just doing these services, you know, on Sunday, and, 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 and God intended his church to be about so much more than that. Without specific goals and clear understanding of expectations, I think people grow weary. I think they get frustrated, and I think ultimately they give up. And uh, so, I, and I'm going to go a step further. I think the goal has to be a compelling one. I think it's got to be something that we step back from and we're like, oh my goodness. Not only is this going to take all of us, all of our energy, every single person coming together to make happen, but we can't do this thing without the Lord. We can't do this without God showing up. And I'm going to tell you right now, for what God has in store for Canvas Church, it is going to take every one of us. And we cannot do it without God. And I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to step out and step into places that wasn't part of his will and his desire and his vision for us. So a, a couple of months ago, and you might not have been here for this service because I think it was during a time when we uh, had uh, like a lot of people who were out sick and stuff. But um, a couple of months ago, I, I shared just a glimpse of what I feel like God has dropped into our hearts about the future vision for Canvas Church. Because multiplication is at the heart of God. It's how the kingdom of God grows. And um, that's how it grows and, and, it, and it expands. And we, we talked about this a bit last week when we were talking about giving and we were talking about the fact that everything that we have belongs to God and that giving isn't a matter of like talking about finances. Giving is a matter about where is your heart and what is your perspective on what you have and the, whether it be your resources or your abilities and that, where do you believe that that comes from and what are you supposed to do with it? And we talked about that, that whole principle of planting and reaping and planting and reaping isn't about addition. It's about multiplication. All right. Planting and reaping, you're not looking, you're hoping for better than just a one-to-one -a -one yield, you know, you're hoping that when you put seed into the ground, that what comes out of that is much more than what you put in. That's multiplication. And, and, and that's what we are called to be about, to sow seed into our community, believing that God's return on that is going to be exponential and it's going to be eternal. So Canvas Church for anybody who's been, you know, a, a part of this from the beginning, you know that our DNA, the whole reason that we exist is we are a product of multiplication. We would not be at this place right here if our friends and family, you know, at Hope Church in, in, in Bentonville, if, if that group of people and that community wouldn't have been obedient to God, believing that we could do better by sending people out, by multiplying, by raising individuals up and sending them out. And so that's, that's what's happened. That's why we're here. We're a result of that obedience to what God has called the church to do. And because of that, I am thoroughly convinced that God desires Canvas Church to be a multiplying work. It's meant to be spoken about and lived out, not just spoken about, but lived out from the very beginnings of this, that we're about raising people up to their fullest created potential. Because a lot of times I think we get, like I said, we get complacent, we hold back. We, you know, I have seen in this journey so far, people activate in ways that I, I hadn't previously seen. They've stepped up. They've stepped into areas that haven't been super comfortable with them, that have been brand new, that they've dreamed about doing, but they've never, maybe they were held back by fear, and now they've pushed through that. Like becoming more 
uh, you know, uh, of the person that they were called and created to be. That's what God has called us to do, is to raise up people to their fullest created potential, and then to release them into the community of Northwest Arkansas. Canvas, I don't believe, is meant to be one church. I believe we're meant to be multiple churches. Because as this area grows and, and uh, I mean, all the things that we've heard about, you know, we, we know that within a lot of projections within 15 to 20 years, they're saying Northwest Arkansas is going to grow to be about a million people, or could. There is not enough churches bringing hope to people, bringing the message that, hey, God does have a purpose and plan for you, regardless of whether of how you see yourself right now, that you were meant to be a masterpiece. God has more in store for you. So I just want to bring that back up again. I, I want, and I'm going to bring that up many, many times. I believe that this is what we're called to. And I know that that seems crazy because it's like, dude, we haven't even opened the doors to this place yet. And you're like talking about us being more than one church. Um, but I, I think that, you know, when you're, when, when God is birthing something and he's building the, the culture and the DNA in that, we have to start off by, by declaring this in a bold way. And it seems crazy trust me, um, and it is definitely a thing that we cannot do on our own, but I believe it's what we're called to. So, next week we open the doors, but even more impor importantly, we open our hearts, we open our lives to the people that God has called us to bring healing and hope to. And as I've talked about like several uh, different weeks in here, we can get a building ready. We can get it equipped for what we want it to do. But ultimately, if we're not ready and we're not equipped, then this is not going to be what God desires it to be. We're not going, this church will not uh, walk into its fullest potential. That preparation begins with us. Yeah, we've done some hard work to kind of transform what we have. And, uh, you know, um, this is not, uh, I, I know this is not a huge space, especially uh, depending upon what you're coming from in that. But, man, I'm so grateful. I am so, so grateful. I mean, just the very fact that we didn't have to get up um, at the butt crack of dawn this morning and, uh, and set up everything, and then after this is over, we we'll tear it all down again um, and expend that energy. I'm so grateful for that. The fact that we have a building that our youth can meet back in on Wednesday or we can talk about doing, you know, bullet journaling or a Super Bowl party or that, all of those things are such a blessing. I know I talked to all of us in here to really consider what it takes to be the church not what we think we need, not, not, not what we're used to, not what we have uh, grown to expect and feel entitled to, but what does it really mean and what do we really need to do what God has called us to do? Because it's a lot less than even what he's given us and blessed us with here. Seriously, think about it. So, the question isn't about you know, how ready is this building? It's about how ready are we. Slapping a sign on a window, or windows, um, and opening the doors on Sunday is not enough to accomplish what we've been called to. What we've been called to is we've been called to leave this building and to go out and to be the church in our neighborhoods, in our workplaces, in our schools, to go and be the church. We have to go to where people are at. We can't just like say, well, here we are, we're open, and expect people to come to us. It's been like a philosophy to some degree that's had to be busted apart within churches for the idea of like, well, our, our job is just to simply be here. 
and God will just bring whoever he wants to. So we just stay here, and then they'll come. Kind of the, if you build it, they'll come thing. I, <clears throat> I, that, would, that would be okay if what we were meant to do was build a building. But that's not what we're meant to do. We're meant to build community. We cannot do that just simply within this building. We've got to get out of here. We come here to be encouraged, to be challenged, to be lifted up, to celebrate, really to celebrate what God has been doing in our lives throughout the whole week. People we've been talking to, praying for, things that we're seeing breakthrough and coming back here to this place and then celebrating it. That's what it's all about. So um, I really wish Heather was here today. <clears throat> um, you know, Heather is our, our children's coordinator, and she does a phenomenal job. She's down with, uh, she's been down for the last couple of days with flu. So Heather's been through quite a, you know, obviously quite a bit in the last couple months. We need to continue to pray for her strength. She pushes through in just amazing ways that every week I just kind of go, wow. But she needs our prayers. And, um, and, and for others that are sick and have been fighting with that this week as well. Um, but Heather talked to me about something like long time back when the whole name Canvas came forth and we were discussing it and that she asked me, you know, um, and, and, you know, I'm an artistic guy, but I don't do a lot of painting. And so this wasn't something that I was super familiar with. But she said, you know, how familiar are you with the preparation of Canvas? you know, to be painted upon. Do you know anything about gessoing? Have you heard that word gesso? And, uh, and I said, no, I don't know what you're talking about. And uh, so uh, gesso is, is basically like primer, all right, for the wall. That's basically what it is. I mean, when you think about the preparation that canvas has to have in order to really um, take on uh, the, the work of the artist, it's got to be stretched, it's got to be stretched, and it's got to be primed. Um, if you don't, if you don't pro properly prime, if you don't properly gesso your canvas, then you can have some issues because the surface of it will not take on the paint in the same way, and when it dries later, it will crack. It's, um, you know, the gessoing actually helps to, to further stretch the canvas and to prepare a surface so that that paint can go on there and that over time it lasts instead of hardening and getting cracked and starting to flake off. And I thought that that was a really cool analogy for us because here in a few minutes, kind of as we close up our service time today, um, Daniel's going to put on some music and then Natalie and I, what we want to do is, is we want to go around um, the room and uh, we're going to pray and anoint your hands with oil. And, uh, and if you're like, huh? Like, if that's like a kind of a weird thing to you or whatever, um, oil was used all over in scriptures and that um, as anointing. Um, and it symbolized uh, places of where God was setting his people apart for something specific, all right? And so there would be an anointing, um, uh, and there would be oil used in that. And, and when I was, um, when I started working for Mercy Hospital, when I started uh, over there working as a chaplain, I was blown away, I remember, because, uh, and they do this with everybody. This wasn't just with chaplains, but any, anybody who works for Mercy um, they're pretty unapologetic about their their mission. Um, I mean, it's 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 a it's a Catholic hospital, um, but I was I was just blown away that they were very forward with the mission. And their mission is the the mission of Mercy is to bring to life the healing ministry of Jesus through compassionate care and exceptional service, but to bring to life the healing ministry of Jesus. So they would go through this orientation and, you know, all the things that you would think of in a regular, like, corporate orientation in that. But then at the end, um, uh, the, 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 the sister, uh, Sister Anita, who is there at, and, and part of administration at Mercy, 
she'd gather everybody up and she would, um, and she'd get oil and she'd have us put out our hands and she would anoint our hands for the work that God was calling us to. Because the mission, again, was to bring forth the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. This morning, we are going to pray over you because each and every one of you has been called to be a part of this in some way. We've all been called out to be the hands and feet of Christ, to represent him in the community, in the world. And, and so I want, I, want us, I want our hands to be anointed and symbolizing that we are, are, we are taking seriously this that we've been called to that it isn't one person's mission or vision or whatever, but it is ours collectively. We join our hearts together and we say, God, would you anoint and set me apart in this moment for the mission and the vision that you have in store for me? So, um, and, and I, was, I was thinking about, um, <laughs> I was thinking about Valerie and the job that Val's done investing her time and talent to share the story of Canvas with the community through our, our social feeds, through our social network. She has done a, a, a phenomenal job with her photography that she's taken. Um, you know, she has, a, uh, she has a passion and a conviction that more than anything else, she wants to use photography to capture real life, authentic life, not airbrushed life, but real, raw life. In that, and so you'll notice, like when you came in this morning, um, it looks awesome. I'm so thankful for people like her, for Jason and Cindy, and that that designed that wall out there with the pictures and that. And there's going to be rotating pictures that go in and out of, uh, of those frames. But more than anything else, that is meant to communicate life here in community. And uh, and I was thinking about the fact that. Because it's not easy. If you've ever been in charge of, um, of, a, of a, especially like a business or an organization's social network or social feeds or whatever, and having to post on a regular basis, it's, it's not easy to continue to keep things fresh, to communicate in ways that seem authentic and not like, oh, this sounds scripted and that. And so Valerie has to be intentional each week about what she wants to post and what she wants to say. And, and I was thinking about, okay, so I was, I've been asked this question a couple of times. Somebody asked me, well, how many people do you expect to see here next week? Like, if you thought about that, how many do you think you'll see on, on launch day? There is approximately, when we're all here together and with kids and everything, there's about 100 in our group, okay? So it's like... Well then, what do you you know? What do you expect to see? And I I hate I I hate questions like that. I really wrestle with them. Um, like when I, you know, this is the first time I've ever stepped out to plant a church, and I started reading you know things about church planning and trying to prepare myself and that. And some of the things that I read about what the average like church planner what their expectation is for their launch day and that, I was like. Uh, maybe I'm not cut out for this because I just didn't have these crazy numbers. Like they're like, I guess the average guy expects to have like 400 people on the first day of opening the church. I was like, what? So, um, so I, again, I was asked that question and I've had to think about it from the standpoint of we got to know what to do with people, right? We got to know what to do if all of a sudden we did have that many folks show up. We've got to have some contingencies. We got to work with our teams and that to make sure that we're ready for those possibilities. But beyond that, I didn't, you know, I've really tried to push those thoughts away and not give any numbers to that. And, I'll, and I'll, I'm just going to be very real with you. My human nature, and you can't tell me you don't do this, or, you know, or have never done this, but my, my human nature was like, um, I, I, maybe I just I'll set the bar down low. And uh, if I set the bar low, then I won't be disappointed, you know, come launch day with some unmet expectation, right? That's kind of what I wanted to do. But you know, as I prayed about it, here's what I felt like God wanted me to do. I felt like God said, you need to set the bar high in the hearts and minds 
of the people who are part of this. You need to pray over them. You need to encourage them. You need to challenge them. And you need to then just let them go. Release them. Step back from all of it. And watch what I do. That's what I feel God has called us to do. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know what all this is going to look like and how it's all going to come together. And to some degree, I'm really happy about that. I don't want to know. I, 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 want, I want to surrender to, to what God has in store for us because the picture he has is better than the one that I will create. If there's anything that I know from, from spending years in ministry, um, I, I really, in, in my heart, I love to be collaborative. I love to, um, I love to give people kind of a big picture vision and get all the functional people around me and share it and, and, and watch them go, okay, okay, I see what you're doing. Okay, okay, that, that's crazy. Um, okay, I don't understand that that's stupid, um, but, but, but that's all right. Whatever you want, man, we'll do it, you know, and, uh, and then let them go, and then they come back, and they create something way better than I could have ever imagined. That's what happens when we do things together. That's why it's in my heart to be collaborative in creation. I do believe that God has called us to creating new things out of this place. I know he's desiring to do that in you, and I think collectively God has called us to some really cool things in the future. And I don't know what that looks like, but I can't wait to see.